guys and welcome back to my channel. It has been a minute since I've recorded a video for you guys, but today's video is very special. We're going to talk about the state of travel post COVID. I know this is still happening. There's still a lot of restrictions. So I wanted to put a couple of tips together to help make planning your next trip a little bit more bearable because there's a lot of new rules. There's a lot of uncertainty. So I wanted to kind of ease your mind and give you a couple helpful ways to plan that trip. Today's video is in partnership and sponsored by Lexington Law. Lexington Law is a partner that I've had for many months now. This is something that I really truly believe in. They are a credit repair firm and they have helped thousands of people. I know right now things have been, we've all been hit financially really hard over the last couple of months, um, myself included. You know, things have been a lot slower with COVID happening. And so if you're in need of any credit repair or assistance in the financial space, let me know. I can answer any questions that you guys have, but I also want and encourage you to check out Lexington Law. I will be sure to have their URL in the description box below. That way you guys can go check it out. Super easy. You can give them a call from your phone. You can just go look at their website on your desktop, but it's a really great service. And this is something that I really wish I had in my mind back when I was 18, 19, because I did struggle with my credit back then. So this is something I encourage you guys, if you're in this boat, you need some help, reach out to Lexington Law. They are awesome and they will fit within whatever budget you guys have. So again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, but head over to Lexington Law. And without further ado, let's get right into all of these travel tips. Okay, so first and foremost, I think it's going to be really advantageous to book now. I am recording this in June. It is June 10th. So right now, if you're trying to book a trip for a couple months down the road, a couple weeks down the road, whatever it is, there's a lot of good deals that you can find because not everyone is traveling yet. Obviously, with states opening up, people are going to start slowly getting into some kind of travel, but prices are still really good. So what you want to do is look up whatever kind of lodging situation you want to have, whether that is a hotel, an Airbnb, a vacation rental, you know, whatever means you find when you go do your lodging, read their cancellation policy because not everyone is on the same page. Hotels are very understanding, but we've been going through kind of an Airbnb rabbit hole and not every single place has a refund policy that is going to allow you to cancel and get all of your money back. So double check that, triple check it, make sure that if you book now and let's just say something happens in two, three months, whatever it may be, whether it's related to COVID or whatever, you really do want to have some kind of out. So double check that, make sure that there is some kind of cancellation policy that you are comfortable with because again, we are still in uncertain times. Some things are still not open in certain states. I know, you know, for example, bars and some restaurants still are not fully open in LA County. Here in Arizona, we are totally open. I think every single type of business is open at this point. So just make sure you're kind of understanding and aware of what those hotel and lodging situations are going to be like. The other thing I want to say about hotels in particular, this is kind of a little bit of an insider tip, if something that you may not be thinking about, but a lot of hotels are going to sell out very, very quickly. And the reason is, is that they actually have a capacity. So in order to follow the CDC guidelines, some hotels and even restaurants um, here in Arizona, I believe it's a 50 or 75% capacity for restaurants, but hotels sometimes may only be able to do a 50% capacity. So if they have 2000 rooms, they're only able to sell a thousand rooms and then they're sold out. Even though there's still rooms available, they need the hotel not to be overcrowded because that is also an issue with COVID. So keep that in mind. If you're looking to book something, you may want to look now because they're just selling less rooms. There's going to be less opportunity to actually book the trip because of that piece. So keep that in mind. Um, again, a little insider tip that I've been kind of getting as we've gone through different hotel sites, as we've gone through different restaurants, there is a capacity that a lot of them have to meet for the foreseeable future. You know, I don't know when we'll get back to 100% capacity or when you can stand in line for a restaurant for an hour outside. A lot of really hot spots in LA, for example, you have to stand outside or wait for hours. I don't know when that's going to come back into play. So make sure that you're reading all that through before you book. A couple of things we saw from booking our trip is that some resorts have a lot of amenities and they have lots of restaurants, they have spas, they have all kinds of services that they're able to provide you. 
typically in a normal world, if you are not a guest of that hotel, you can still go and have a massage at that hotel, okay? With all of this stuff happening now, they're really trying to limit and understand how many people are gonna be on the property for a certain period of time. And this goes back to capacity. So let's just say that you normally stay at the Hilton in Phoenix and you get spa services at the JW. You will have to double check and make sure that the JW is going to allow you to have those amenities and services if you are not actually a resort guest. Even if you were a resort guest, you would still have to make sure that they had availability and that you made a reservation. But if you're not a guest, there's going to be less opportunity to get some of these services. And this is, again, something I researched and I kind of know from people who have been traveling to Phoenix in particular because a lot of people like to get massages and facials and nails and all this stuff. And so if you're not a guest, sometimes that's going to be tricky. So again, you wanna call ahead, make sure that if you're not a guest at the resort, can you still get those services, make the reservation, figure out what their policies are so you don't book something or think you're gonna book something and then all of a sudden you don't have your spa day anymore that was part of your trip. So keep that in mind as well. One of the biggest things for me personally is snacks and food. I love food, I love beer, I love wine, I love all of those things. And during this time period, a lot of places are going to have very limited hours. So let's just say that you're getting on a plane and you're gonna be flying to your destination. Make sure you have food and snacks of some kind for the next maybe two, three meals because if you land somewhere and let's just say it's 8.30 at night, everything may be closed because again, you guys know that a lot of hours are very limited right now. So maybe all the restaurants closed at seven, maybe they closed at eight, maybe the grocery stores closed early too. I mean, a lot of local grocery stores here in town are closing very early and surprisingly early. You know, I was surprised the other day when I found out Crate and Barrel was closed at five. That's really early. So make sure you have snacks and food so you can at least get through a couple meals without having to not eat, I guess. So the other thing too, when it comes to airline kiosks, we already know that if it's like four in the morning and you're at the airport in Chicago or wherever, sometimes those kiosks aren't open and sometimes those restaurants aren't open. You know, at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., maybe a bagel place is open. The options are going to get more slim where they are slim now just because of everything going on. So again, pack some snacks, pack some food, and then to kind of piggyback off of that one, do not or try really hard not to use public water fountains. I know that there's a lot of sanitation happening now, but public water fountains, especially in the airport, you know, at the gym, outside, just public water fountains are dirty, okay? People are putting their lips and their faces into that. You do not wanna be filling your water bottle with all of those germs that are kind of floating through the air because maybe the person who got a drink from that water fountain last had COVID, now the particles are kind of there and then they splash into your water bottle. Just avoid it altogether. And I know this is not good and not ideal for the environment, but you're gonna have to buy some bottled water, okay? If you don't like tap water, when you get to your destination, you're just gonna have to buy some bottled water because it's gonna be the most it's gonna be the cleanest way that you're gonna get water. So I would highly recommend against that. And I know some people are already grossed out by water fountains just in a regular world, but now I really hesitate with that because you do have a lot of people who don't even show symptoms and they may dr take a drink from that water fountain and then you're splashing their germs into your water, mug, glass, whatever container you have, not I would highly recommend against that, especially in an airport. So kind of keep that in mind. Now again, if you're traveling through air, you're going into an airport, make sure to read the guidelines for the airports that you're going to be in, okay? Read those guidelines and then also for your airline. That's gonna be the most important. I have heard that a lot of um, airports are pretty flexible. People are already not wearing masks inside the airport, but all of the airlines are very strict that for the duration of your flight, you will have to wear the mask. Now, how long is that gonna be? I don't know. Again, we're in June now. Maybe in two months, you don't have to wear a mask during your flight, but right now, you do. So plan to have a mask, plan to have one that's slightly breathable. You don't want something that's so tight on you that it's hard to breathe because if your flight is three, four, five hours long, you have to wear that consistently for the entire flight. So 
keep that in mind everyone because it's going to make a big difference it's going to kind of like make or break that flight because you're going to be slightly uncomfortable you might be hot i can't even imagine getting on a plane right now flying from tucson to phoenix or phoenix anywhere because it's over 100 degrees already and to have a mask before the ac kicks on that's miserable so just keep that in mind i have some breathable ones that are not super tight but just another thing to kind of think about if you have a mask that's not super comfortable and you kind of just throw it on for 20 minutes to go inside the store maybe get a new mask that's going to be a little bit more comfortable for that long trek so for the trip that we are going on we are actually going to be road tripping so we are going to rent a car here in town and then take the car to the destination now we have a sanitation plan in place you should have one of these for your seat on the plane any sort of Ubering situation. I mean, you can wipe down the areas when you're sitting in the car, just depending on how much you want to clean around you. But for a rental car that you're gonna have for several days, you need to have a sanitation plan in place. Now, we have prepared kind of this little mini sanitation kit, if you will. We've got two cloths in there, so two just white, like dirty, raggy cloth type of um, fabric I guess and then a small travel size of disinfecting spray so I can just spray it on the cloth and then wipe down whatever I'm trying to wipe down and then also disinfecting wipes so when you get on the plane for example use those disinfecting wipes wipe down the seat the tray the back of the seat in front of you all of that with a disinfecting wipe but with the car I figured cloth and some disinfecting spray is probably gonna be a little bit more effective that way we're not just like getting the, all the seats wet so keep that in mind as well. Have some sort of sanitation plan in place for pretty much everywhere that you are going to be making your own for several days or hours. You know, on the plane, you're gonna be there for several hours. If you're gonna be in a rental car, you know, when you get to your destination, if you're hotel or Airbnb, you know, areas that you're gonna be eating or using quite a lot, like maybe the bathroom counter where you put your makeup or the desk in the room where you're gonna put snacks, wipe it all down have those items ready because you want to just double triple check to make sure that it is wiped down that it's in disinfection mode and you're not just kind of putting that on the hotel it is our responsibility to also clean it maybe the person cleaning it was sick wipe it down wipe it down wipe it down so something you can expect in pretty much any destination right now is that there's going to be a new normal so in a restaurant, you're gonna have bartenders and waiters and the hotel staff, if you're you know, eating inside a hotel, all of them are probably going to be required to wear masks for the foreseeable future. Again, maybe not in two months, but right now, everybody has to wear a mask. So if you're in a restaurant, everybody's serving and touching your food, everybody in the kitchen, they all have masks on. You as the guest may not need to have a mask on, but just keep in mind that you're gonna see everybody else in masks. And I know it's kind of alarming at first, you're just kind of taken back that everyone has a mask on, but just get that image in your mind now because it's going to become very common as you're going from restaurants, you're going to different amenities, people are going to want to protect themselves and to protect other people. And oftentimes people think, you know, the mask isn't really doing anything, but it really is. It's keeping your germs to yourself and not necessarily projecting them across to the person that's around you. And it's also keeping those germs from coming right into your lungs and your breathing space. So keep that in mind. Obviously in a restaurant, it's pretty silly to wear a mask if you're the one eating the food. How are you gonna eat through the mask doesn't make sense. But if you're in other places, just be respectful and wear that mask. Now piggybacking off of the restaurant scenario, a lot of places are requiring you to make a reservation before you go to the restaurant. So keep that in mind as well, because again, they're gonna have capacity levels. You're not gonna be able to fill up the restaurant. They've actually separated in a lot of places here in town. They've separated tables several feet apart. So if you have you know, your table of four, there's about six feet onto the next table where before they were kind of packed in, you were kind of packed in like a sardine can inside the restaurant. Now the capacity is a lot less, which means that reservations are going to go up because everyone's making one and there's just less people that can be inside the restaurant at the same time. So keep that in mind and also kind of be respectful. If you're planning on having a really long night there with a group of eight or whatever, keep that in mind because that's really taking away from the service and the bartending staff and all everybody that's working for your table. It's keeping them from other tables and it's keeping the restaurant from bringing in new people. So kind of think about that perspective 
of if you're taking all this time, make sure you're ordering a lot, order drinks, whatever, make sure to tip well, because if you're taking that space, you're really taking almost twice as much space, if that makes sense. That's, I think that's just really good perspective to have because if all of these restaurants are booked at about 50 to 75% capacity, they're already losing money. And if you're staying there for hours, they're losing even more. So again, it's how we can all just be good humans and respectful and kind. Now the CDC does recommend that there is some situations for gloves. And it's really if you're wiping and cleaning things down that have come from the outside in. So let's say that you got a box or you got groceries or you know, you brought in food. You don't wanna like kind of clean the outside of all of that. And it's best to do that with gloves. That way it doesn't get on your hands. And you just wanna take the gloves off, throw them away, wash your hands and move on. The other reason is if one of you, if you have a travel partner or you're with a group, if somebody gets sick, you really want to have those gloves because you want to clean all the things that they're touching with those gloves, then you can again take the gloves off. But they don't really recommend doing gloves for everyday essential runs like going to the grocery store or you know that type of stuff. It's really if someone has been infected that is close to you or you're touching things that could be infected. Otherwise, the gloves kind of don't really help because you're gonna be touching everything anyway just like you would with your hands so keep that in mind but I think having one pair of gloves with you is really good in case you know the lodging your hotel whoever wherever you're staying doesn't have that um, at their disposal so keep that in mind as well it's another thing to just kind of add into your suitcase obviously bring a comfortable mask I already mentioned that earlier but I think the gloves is kind of something that people forget it could be advantageous if something or someone is sick or exposed around you. And kind of the last tip I'm going to leave you with here is to try to minimize the amount of cash you use. I know sometimes when I go on trips, I wanna take out a little bit of cash, that way I can kind of monitor my spending a little bit more. And I think right now with cash, exchanging money, touching money, giving it to someone, taking money from them, it's kind of dirty. Money has always been really dirty and gross anyway, but right now is a really sensitive time, so if you can, you really want to try to just do debit card, you put it in the slot, take it out. Even that's getting exposed quite a bit because people are putting their cards into that same slot. But the exchanging of cash is really not great, so try not to do that as much. And then the other thing I would recommend is if you can, if there's any place that does Apple Pay that's totally contactless, it's just a scan, that's the best way to do it, honestly, rather than having to touch anything at all and put your debit card in. But cash is kind of the worst right now then you want to do your cards and if you can do something contactless that is ideal i know it's really hard not every single restaurant and business is going to have apple pay so try to do it if you can you know like a whole foods or um, some of those larger chains if you're grabbing groceries or snacks during your trip you want to use apple pay if you can so that is it those are kind of the major tips that we've kind of come across as we've been planning our trip post covid 19. i hope that you guys will start to travel i know that the travel and tourism space is really um, longing for our business and wanting us to keep traveling and we want to make sure that you do it in a safe way obviously but these are just kind of the tips that i've seen um, really be helpful over the last couple of weeks just keep in mind that things this is a new normal this is how it's going to be going forward for a little while. I don't know how long, obviously, but I think you just want to be better safe than sorry. So bring those masks, bring those gloves, bring your little disinfecting kit. And if you guys have any other recommendations on what your travel post COVID has been, let us know down in the comments below. And again, I say post COVID and it's not, we're not past it yet, but now that we can actually go out, it's a good time to kind of put into perspective what tips and tricks are going to be beneficial for us as we travel even with COVID out there. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. This video was sponsored by Lexington Law. I hope you guys check them out. They are a credit repair firm. They are awesome. And I will make sure to include their website URL, any other pertinent information that I think could be helpful. So let me know again, any questions, always happy to help and get back to you guys. And I hope you're having a great day and having so much fun planning your next trip. I know I am, I'm so excited to get out of the house. I feel like I've been stuck in this house for since like October, November. So it's time for us to travel and I'm just really excited that we're able to. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.